Namaste, good morning. Namaste, Shamla Didi. Namaste, all. Welcome to the morning session. Ji, Namaste, Sunil Ji. Sabiko Namaste. Good morning and welcome. Yeah, we can start. Yeah, Didi. So, we have one sharing today by A. Gida Didi. Namaste, Gida Didi. Namaste, Sunil Bhaiya. Ji. So, Gita Didi, uh, I will uh, put your brief, in, brief introduction in the, in the beginning. Then I can give you a sharing within the stipulated time based on these indicators. Ji, bhaiya. Ji. As we all know, Gita Didi is a very active volunteer. She is an associate professor in the Department of Computer Science, Government and Sun Science College, Avinashi, Tamil Nadu. And she has joined the introductory workshop, attended the workshop, in January 2000, so November 2020, and then USP uh, Refresher 1 Part 1, January 2021. Then uh, she is moderating the weekly meetings. Uh, she is handling sessions at uh, SDP. In she is part of the Tamil translation team, and she is a co-facilitator in many face-to-face -face workshops. Yeah, so a very active volunteer and asking several questions, helping all of us. I welcome A. Gita Didi for her presentation, for her sharing today in the morning session. Didi, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Sunil Bhaiya. Namaste, Sharmila Didi. Sadiko, Namaste. So about my brief introduction. So Bhaiya has already introduced about me. Moving on to my husband. He is Mr. Samvat Kumar, running Typewriting Institute, Xerox, and he does computer job work. Our son Monish, he got married recently, and our daughter in law name is Abhi. As Baya has said, I got associated with UHV from November 2020 during the pandemic period. Thereafter, I completed Refresher Part 1 and Part 2. I am attending the UHV morning sessions from Jan to 2021, almost regularly. Moving to the next segment, sharing my understanding emerging out of exercise 1 and 2. Exercise 1. First and foremost step is to be aware. To be aware every moment and to observe the feelings. Very, very important step. This is where the self-exploration starts. My reflections and observations about past. First one, why to see feelings instead of thoughts? I used to get such questions often because I was having the difficulty in seeing the feelings. Now, I am able to see that with thoughts, one cannot decide right or wrong because thoughts are infinite. It will be based on our environment, brought up, sanskars, preconditions and assumptions. So, it is very hard to decide right or wrong because it will vary from person to person. But with feelings, there is no diversity, no range. No varieties, only two choices for all people. If the feelings are in line with natural acceptance, then it puts us in harmony. If feelings are not in line with natural acceptance, then it puts us in disharmony. And everyone is bestowed with this innate faculty called natural acceptance. So now, I am able to clearly understand. It is very, very essential for us to observe the feelings than the thoughts. Then, my re next reflection about visibility of thoughts. For quite some time, I was not able to see my thoughts when I initially joined the first batch of the morning session. So, I assumed there were no thoughts. But now I could see. When I am confused, 
or in a dilemma, the thoughts are very much visible and gross. <coughs> Sorry. And I could see it going on continuously. On the other hand, if I am stable and doing a task like going to college, there is also series of thoughts like to move out, to take my vehicle, clean it up, to start, to ride. But as it is happening regularly, thoughts happen fast and it goes unnoticed. But if I can sharpen my observation all the time, my third observation regarding thoughts. Conflicting thoughts are always gross. If there are con conflicting thoughts for over a period of time, it will result in headache. Makes me feel tired, drained and totally exhausted. So, from exercise 1, step 1, I am able to understand that it is very very essential to observe the feelings. <coughs> step 2. If I observe, then steps 2 and 3 follows in quick succession because it is associated with feelings. Then step 4. If I am unhappy or disturbed, then I take a pause, interact with myself and ask myself who decided that this harmonious feeling. Sometimes after a bit struggle, the bitter truth, the bitter truth will emerge that it's me who decided that feeling. So, I was introspecting myself only when I was unhappy. A, a great revelation happened to me after batch 8. That if I am happy, I don't bother to see who decided my feeling. Because anyway I am happy. Sadly, my happiness was also at the mercy of other hands or situations. If they behave with me nicely, then I was happy. Here again, for excitement, I was giving the meaning as happiness. Now, I started to check in excitement also who decided it. It's me in both cases undoubtedly. So, a big improvement for me in step 4 because I am checking for both the cases now. Recently, in the department, when a circular came, as the HOD was not available, I signed on her behalf. And once she turned up, I conveyed the message and said that I signed that circular. Immediately, she said, before you sign, call me up because it's for me. Then I started to defend myself, giving the answers back to back, saying, you didn't inform me that you will be late, it's just a circular, going on with my arguments for few minutes. Parallelly, I could see my discomfort building up, my reactive expression. Step 4, I need to work more. Still, I am complaining others and situations. In real time, I fail to map that my feelings fix my happiness and unhappiness because I get too involved in the situation forgetting myself. Moving to step 5. Step 5 helps to see on what basis I decided my feeling. With that example, just I narrated, I came to know that I decided my feeling. Step 4. The feeling of opposition based on the assumption that I am superior. I must not be dictator. Whatever I am doing is right. Resulting to my reaction. Next, steps 6 and 7. They help me to access my natural acceptance more frequently as I am able to see, rather able to feel my feelings vividly. I am able to see the necessity of step 6 and 7 to ensure the feeling of relationship 
harmony and coexistence so as to be happy in continuity. One example I wish to narrate here. If I have the feeling of relatedness to any act I bring, the task becomes so easy and comfortable. Example, dishwashing, cleaning, mopping, etc. I am having the sanskar of laziness. A small example, usually I won't clean the fridge for 6 months. The clutter will irritate Whenever I open the fridge, the clutter will irritate me. Then I will go into disharmony. Because of disharmony, I won't, I won't clean it. So, more clutter, more disharmony. Then I won't clean it. So, it was like a vicious cycle. Now, it has become my old pattern. Now, with the feeling of relatedness to fridge, I clean it now and then. These days, I feel I am related to all my home appliances. So, rightly utilizing and maintaining the physical facility with the feeling of relatedness as a result in harmony in doing the household chores. So, in exercise 1, steps 1 and 4 are very challenging to me. But if I am able to get through that, then the rest of the steps follows very naturally. Moving to exercise 2. These days, I am able to see and differentiate the two distinct entities, self and body. Space is still an assumption. But I am able to conclude logically that only because of space, which acts as an interface or medium to transact, self and body are able to communicate as they are totally two different distinct realities. Steps 2 and 3. If I observe, then I am able to see the interaction between self and body. And it is the self that initiates the transaction. Step 4. Sensations are in the body. And the self decides when to read and what to read. For me, Step 4 essentially depicts that I am not the body. Yes, self and body are two distinct entities. One interesting observation here. On one occasion, I slept in a room on the floor with a flux banner as a blanket. I am not used to it, but still self decided to ignore the cold sensation and decided to adapt itself to the situation with whatever is available there. After an initial hiccup, I had a sound sleep. The next day morning, I came to see that the flux banner was used to dry wet onions and there were onion peels, dust and mud everywhere with a strong pungent smell of onion. But during night, there was no feel of onion peels on the skin, nor the pungent smell on the nose. Yes, self has decided not to read any sensation. Quite interesting for me. Then step 5. Giving meaning to the sensation based on my samskars. I would acknowledge this step a lot. There are quite a lot of examples. But let me share only two incidents here. Recently, because of a family function, I was not able to join the morning meeting for two days. On day one, my mind, B2 block, said, Even if you are not listening, join the meeting. Reduce the volume and keep the phone aside. So that the UHV team will know that you are not missing a single session and that you are sincere. Wicked mind. I could see the meaning I am giving for my excuse. Able to notice my ego or supremacy sanskar instantly popping up. But I decided not to do such dramas. After that decision, I felt light inside. 
and I didn't have the guilt feeling of not joining the morning meeting. Second incident of late. If I look back to my personal life, for me and my spouse, our taste, likes, dislikes were just exactly opposite. Totally incompatible in our thoughts and thought process. And the meaning I gave was, he is my rivalry. He is dead against all my wishes. And we can never get along. Mostly, I picked up fights, arguments and quarrels. And I will hold it on for a long time. I can't easily let it go. This is also one more sanskar of mine. I can't let it go easily. Leading to my overthinking. Then I will start to think of going alone. Getting separated my, from my husband. The story doesn't end here. After some time, then I will start to worry. If I am living alone, few people may take advantage and will misbehave with me. Spoiling my reputation. Spoiling my name. Like that, thoughts will continue. Making my life unhappy and miserable fueled up my sanskar of ego also. I will suffer till the end. It is my experiential validation. I was giving the meaning as differences rather than as complementarity. Here I would make like to make an important observation. Had I not been associated with virtue, I would have messed up the life of my son and daughter-in-law too. Yes, really I would have troubled them also. With respect to steps 6a and b, my reactions are coming down and my responses are more. But I need to work more on step 6b for right understanding, right feeling and right evaluation. Moving to step 7. Now I see it's only because of space we all are related. That is all units are related. That is relationship. All units coexist in space which is coexistence. As all units are related and coexist there is harmony. Yes, I am able to draw this conclusion from step 7. But I wish to see it for myself. Space, relationship, harmony and coexistence of existence in reality. So this is about step, sorry, this is about exercise 2, my understanding about exercise 2. Moving to the fourth step. As I had already stated, when I look back my life, it's me who made my life a suffering. So it's very clear, very obvious that happiness is my innate nature. But I need to work upon myself to be in that state always. Over these three years, our relationship has improved a lot and my happiness index has increased drastically. And the program we ensure is, is to do exercise 1 and 2 around the clock. Focus on self has increased comparatively with more observation. These days, I am, I am becoming aware of my preconditions and assumptions. Also noting when I am getting irritated. Also noting and listing down my son's cars. One interesting uh, reflection, preparing for this sharing also has increased my self-exploration and observations. Coming to the last segment, commitments. I am volunteering myself in Saturday and Sunday weekly meetings. I am uh, I'm also a part in UHV Tamil translation team, handling sessions in student workshop. Also have acted as a co-facilitator in two face-to-face -face workshops. But I can understand that I need to volunteer more, explore more. I have to contribute more. And I will continue my UHV journey for the rest of my life. Today, also I have asked both my son and daughter-in-law to listen to my live sharing 
hope they are listening thank you all with gratitude to the entire existence thank you sunil bhaiya over to you ji thank you gita didi for this nice sharing now a couple more of hands are raised so before i we go to the questions of surikant priya and rupalin didi let me request shamla didi to give her comments regarding gita didi sharing shamla didi over to you thank you ji namaste gita ji namaste shamla didi yeah very really nice to hear your sharing and i was reflecting on how much of a change has come about in your sharing from the beginning how much difference has come in the questions that you raised from the time when you started till now and it is quite obvious that the exploration is going on in you for all of this you are constantly trying to be aware at every moment but it is true that many of our um, you know this is a very long journey and many of our sanskars are so deep rooted that it seems to drive our feelings spontaneously even before we become aware and even after awareness it sometimes takes a little bit of time to get back to the right feeling because the sanskar seems so strong but i can see that a lot of change has happened and that you are working very meticulously and conscientiously towards that end and i think the very fact that from day one i have felt that you are very honest in your sharings you are able to see what is where the problem is or you know um, you don't have a issue about sharing even in front of say your own family your son your daughter in law now to be able to share this um and to be able to say candidly that this is how i was thinking i think it takes a lot and it is worth appreciating that you are able to say this out because it will be very useful very helpful for many others who are listening to you so of course um, more and more clarity on space and other things will come for all of us you know we are working towards that and i think you have rightly pointed out that you know in the steps also that some of the steps are harder for you to accept and for some of the steps that you mentioned that it takes time so even in the beginning when you say about step 1 that initially you had the question of why is it important to see the feeling mm-hmm. and initially that you weren't even able to see the thoughts mm-hmm. so this would be very useful for others who are going through the process because this is how the process goes um you know for all of us we start with is as something new that we haven't been observing inside so it takes time to observe the thoughts and it takes even more time to observe the feeling for some mm-hmm. of us more some for some of us less time but it takes time so i think this is um, what you are mentioning is very useful for others to hear that was something that i was thinking about you also mentioned one line that um, it is obvious that happiness is my innate nature so mm. would you like to say how it became obvious to you or why do you say that happiness is your innate nature ji 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 yeah did i was struggling mm-hmm. literally i was uh, suffering so i thought it is my fate this time before, uh, during this lifetime 
I have to suffer. I have to suffer, suffer with a spouse who is not able to be compatible with my thoughts. Like that, I was thinking. So I thought it is my destiny to suffer. So that was the assumption I was having before you achieve. Honestly speaking, that was the assumption because I have heard many things like people saying it is a destiny, it is a fate. I have done something wrong. That is why this lifetime I am suffering. Like that, I was having my own assumptions, Didi. And it got strengthened day by day. But after getting associated with the proposals of UHV, things started to unfold to me naturally, Didi. I was able to see it is me who is the source of my unhappiness, not others or the external situation. It started to unfold within me quite naturally. Didi. Then it struck me, yes, happiness is my innate nature. It's me who have troubled myself with my own feelings and thoughts. So, that's why I said it's my own experiential validation. I had suffered a lot for the past two decades. And I was blaming the other person. Now, this three years of UHV journey has helped me that it's not the other, it's not the external situation, it's me. It is in my own hand, it is within my reach, it is inside me. I had given lectures, did it, that happiness is our innate nature, happiness is a choice, like that I had given lectures. But only after getting connected with UHV, I have to see, I am able to see that, yes, it is truly my innate nature. I am gifted with this innate faculty. Yeah. Only because of my assumptions, preconditions. I thought life was a struggle, life was a suffering baby. So from that only I say, uh, said baby, it is very obvious that happiness is my innate nature baby. Hmm. Okay, nice. See the, the I how I look at it is that uh, happiness is our innate nature, that is why the least bit of um, disharmony creates a disturbance within us. Mm -hmm. So um, so we can notice the disturbance immediately. Otherwise, we are able to see that, uh, you know, this we are comfortable when we are in harmony. Mm -hmm. um, also, I was noticing um, earlier, uh, before you used to... Um, do the volunteering activities the progress I felt was slower mm -hmm. and and those days you used to also mention that you didn't have time for the volunteering but mm -hmm. then you made time and I think your progress has gone much faster after that do you feel that I felt like this so what are your thoughts on that GDD it is very true GDD Volunteering has helped me a lot, but for the past um, one or two months, I was a little bit catchy, Didi. But otherwise, I could really see that volunteering has helped me a lot, Didi. So it gets connected with the, it helps us to get connected with the UHV proposal by hearing again and again, Didi. Uh, one day it will unfold, Didi. The, uh, the real meaning of that statement will unfold to us, Didi. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. volunteering has helped a lot, Didi. So has the sharing also, Didi. It helps us a lot yes. to get the deeper and the wider meaning of this, those proposals, Didi. Yeah, I would say, you know, whether it be UHV, whether it be volunteering, whether it be sharing, all of these are helpful because they are putting you in touch with the content again and again. But ultimately, it is your exploration that is helping you. These are pointers to help you explore. So when you go through the points for sharing, you are exploring within, even when you are thinking about it, even when you are looking at, you know, 
what you're going to share. It makes you look back at each step and see how clear or unclear it is to you. And all that exploration helps in that process. So I think I would say it is our exploration, but these are triggers to help us explore. And so is volunteering for that matter, because in the volunteering activities also, you come across many challenges. Like for instance, when it is, you know, with the material objects, there is no, or if you are with nature, there is no answering back. There is no reaction from the other side. So it may be easier to handle things. It is only your own reactions you have to deal with. But when it comes to another human being, sometimes mm -hmm. it is more challenging because now there is some reaction from the other side that makes you react or you, you know, want to react back because of that reaction from the other side. <coughs> So then it snowballs into a bigger effect and it's, it's harder to come out of it. That's how I was seeing it. Um, so maybe that's why it seems easier for many people to, you know, they say that we feel the relatedness with nature, but when it comes to another human being, um, they are stuck. But eventually, of course, to be able to see our relatedness with everything, every unit like that is important and ultimately to get over our sanskars which are <clears throat> making us look at ourselves as separate from everything else so very nice sharing all the very best to you and we look forward to more of your participation as before all the best thank you Didi whatever you said is very true Didi thank you so much for all your yes. mentoring and guideship duties. Definitely, I'll be in touch with you, HVD. Thank mm -hmm. you so much for all your suggestions and reflections, Didi. Thanks a lot, Didi. Didi, I think you're not well, Didi. I know, no. okay, a little bit of the throat. That's okay. Okay, Didi, take care, Didi. Thank you, Didi. Thank you.